Um, so early this spring, we started talking about how there are a lot of great groups in State College that are interested, that have um, missions related to sustainability, whether it's energy, um, transportation, local food, education, any of those kind of things. We realized that there was a lot going on. And while they might know each other individually and occasionally pair with each other for a particular event, we thought that it'd be a really great thing for this community to get everyone in one place, to have a big festival to celebrate all of it. Because I know there are a lot of people that are really excited about this kind of stuff, um, but just may not know where to find these groups or exactly what they do. So we wanted to bring them all out there, put them right in downtown where people would come by, um, see everything that they're doing, and hopefully find ways that they can get involved and find things that they can do in their community that they can get excited about. I started here at the borough as an AmeriCorps member, working on environmental sustainability issues. Uh, in my time as an AmeriCorps member, we've done a lot of capacity building. We've worked on a bicycle ambassador program. We've connected with the groups in the community that are taking those small steps uh, towards energy efficiency, waste management, redu uh, reducing the amount of things we send to the landfill. I've worked with groups that build bicycle trails and teach people how to ride a bike. So with that capacity building, the Borough State College is now able to offer more programs, build more green infrastructure, uh, and work with those groups that didn't have that connection to local government before. I've been with Green Army for a couple years now. Um, it started with a young couple in New York City. They wanted to do something more for, for the environment and their young family. So they started this eco-consultant business, and now we're the largest in the country. They have thousands of eco-friendly products on our website. Um, we can go into people's homes to help them to see little things that they can do. We're all here today because, I mean, obviously the world, the whole world needs clean, reliable energy. I mean, it's at the heart of everything we do. I mean, we, we're illuminating the space that we're in today. We're cooking outside with it. We're heating and cooling the building that we're in. Um, we use it to clean, to cook, to, to manufacture the products that we use every day. We power up our computers, our phones, everything that we use. We're here. This is a club that we're in from the local high school with Miss Herman and she got a grant to go with um, from the National Science Foundation for Polar Trek to go with a with a scientist from Alabama to go down to Antarctica and study ocean acidification. So ocean acidification is when CO2 from bur the burning of fossil fuels goes into our atmosphere and it mixes with the ocean to um, create carbonic acid which destroys the shells of mollusks and will really affect our environment. Um, so we're basically just trying to make people aware of the situation to um, help the environment because it's really um, creating a problem for the oceans. Alright, so one thing that she mentioned was that it's destroying the uh, mollusk shells. So when it's destroying the shells of the smaller organisms like plankton, we're seeing depletions of fish through the food chain. And um, one, another bad thing is, if you look at that, uh, here, let me just, uh, <laughs> if you look at this cup, we see that our advisor, Ms. Herman, actually put a piece of coral in some vinegar last night. And vinegar is actually less acidic than carbonic acid. And it's almost, it's bubbling today. And it, within three days, this coral will actually be gone. So, I mean, this is just an example of what's really at stake here. Yeah. So in order to help, there are a few things that you can do. Um, it's pretty adamant and straightforward, but you can really just try to go green. Use as little of your car as possible. You can bike, you can walk, try to carpool, use public transportation, uh, eat locally grown food because that doesn't have to be transported and therefore doesn't give off as many emissions. So. So basically we're here just to let people know what's going on because a lot of the time when you're told to either carpool or ride your bike, you think it's just because of pollution and a lot of people forget about the oceans. And so whenever um, ocean acidification is going on, either animals are losing their food or their home. So it affects the whole food chain. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Exactly. There are a lot of things that are really easy. People think that, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to insulate my whole house. And while it often can be the biggest bang for the buck to do things like insulate your attic or your walls, and it certainly will make you more comfortable, there are a lot of really easy things and also very inexpensive things that you can do. Um, for example, in your kitchen sink, these little tiny aerators, which cost about $4.00, if you look for a low flow, 1.5 gallons um, or two if you can't find a 1.5, it just aerates the flow of the water so you use less, um, less hot water. And that not only will cut a, um, a water bill, but it will also cut the bill of whatever you use to heat your water, whether it's gas or electricity. Uh, we're here to promote our farm and show our vegetables and try to get new members for the uh, upcoming season next year. We're a CSA out on 550. We do. We actually the first one to do a student share, so we're trying to also provide vegetables for students, and we're just trying to raise awareness about our farm. This is our sixth year of growing, and um, we're starting to try to branch out into uh, restaurants and kind of all fields of the community, but. We also like to stay to our core and provide, you know, hearty, healthy vegetables to our, uh, our weekly members, so. EcoCar is a three-year competition. Right now we're in the second year of it. Um, so this year of the competition, we're working on physically building our vehicle. In year one, it was all design, working in the computers, on CAD, picking out which type of architecture we wanted to do. This year, we're actually physically building the hybrid in the garage, um, so it's a really exciting year. Well, it's all about um, decreasing the greenhouse gas emissions from your vehicle and other harmful emissions. So are we decided to do a series plug-in hybrid. So we actually have E85 fuel that will kick in when our electric battery runs out while we're driving around town. We can go about 45 miles just on electric alone without using a drop of fuel.